we're back live. Uh, these are my Televideo 925 keycaps. They just got cleaned and dried, ultrasonic cleaning. Um, oops, yeah, let's see. I'm gonna just put, I, I just had a failed experiment where I thought maybe their Cherry MX stems would work on uh, modern keyboard, but they're too wide. They're seven millimeter, 7.2 millimeters wide instead of 5.6 switch fit, and so therefore they don't fit when, they, when you press down on the switch. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them. I guess try to restore the board, the, that keyboard itself uh, would be the better route for these. Uh, or I could do a stem mod, but yeah, they're beautiful. The, the, they're thick, thick uh, double shot. Very thick, very old, I guess. I should know my dates better. I don't know how old the Televideo 925 is, but I need a better list of the data about my keyboards. Um, it's got a numpad, so yeah, I think it'd be cool to convert more of the old ones to modern full size and see what kind of combos you can get. But that requires stem mod. Which we're going to look at, but for my Digital Equipment Corporation, LK201BA. But first I'm going to label these that they're clean. So this is a Televideo. Let's get a label on these. And the last thing I said was LK201 clean. So let's get back that up and... Nine twenty five print. Let's see what we get here. Fit. Clean the case of this one too. I got a bunch of nice new ones off eBay during COVID since I can't go get my recyclers and stuff. So this is uh, one of my good. Allie, I'm live, so you can maybe chat quieter. If you don't mind, let's see. Alright, setting these aside. And uh, this. So, it's raining outside if you can hear that noise. It's thundering down on the rooftop. I uh, have been working on my stem mod for these guys. And uh, it's getting closer. It's getting a lot closer. So, the latest round is I, I do think. Uh, I got my jig where I want it, and so I started printing a few of them, and they all seem to be working. How many do I have right now? One, two, three, four, five, six jigs. And um, now I was working on a tighter uh, stem uh, mount that goes under the keycap. Because I think I'll zoom in for this, and I think I'll get. Uh, the batch off of the printer right now, or off of the, it's been uh, doing secondary, under my grill lamp I'm doing a second level of curing and I think it's done now. I usually try to do around 30, 45 minutes of uh, secondary curing. And uh, what I did was We'll see if I can zoom in on this because this is going to be some, it's all about the small details on this one. So let me see if I can zoom in. And... Okay, Saudi Arabia is where we're at. Let's see if we can get some, some stuff there. Now what you probably, I don't know if we'll be able to see on the camera, I'll try, but this is actually a five of, uh, of one size. Uh, Basically, ins inside of the cross, uh, it was too loose, so I tried to narrow the width of, of an arm. And so, 
Uh, hopefully, yeah, and I did write on the outside of them, or I put, I bolted on some characters so that we can see it, the what the, what each one is, and, and I can get out the the microscope if we need to. But uh, this says one twenty, and one hundred by one twenty, so basically one point two millimeters by one millimeter for the for this one. Now I'm going to set that aside because we need to find one that's, uh, I think, uh, the other size, which I think is like 123 or something. So this one's, I can't tell, it says 100-ish. Let's see. Yeah, it's not as translucent, so it's not telling us as easily, is it? Can't tell if that says 100. Is this, if we can get a clear reading of one of the two numbers, we'll know. Yeah, that's a 120 by 100, I believe. So, don't need the, I mean, I want to find one of the other ones. Let's see, the, does the top look good on this? Yep, okay. Uh, that's 120 as well. I guess if we have to go through all ten of them, we'll eventually get there. Uh, I don't see. And uh, let's see. Actually, is the top busted on this one? No, it looks all right. One twenty. Oh, one twenty-two. Okay, that one says one twenty-two by. Uh, 102, so yeah, this one is uh, slightly bigger, so I think I, I think what I was doing was 125 and 105 was too loose, so I did, okay, let me say it in better terms, 1.25 millimeters and 1.05 millimeters was too loose, so I'm trying 1.22 and by 102, 1.02, and I'm trying 1.2 by 1. And so this is the, this one's one notch down, it's, uh, and then this one that I, I've been, that I got grabbed first is two notches down. So small, and smallest, and next notch up. So I was trying to see if these are tighter. So the way I do that, let me move my pile over to the side here. Uh, is I'm going to set these down right here and then I'm going to get out my uh, I pulled a switch apart and here's a stem and uh, yeah let's see if it's uh, sometimes I worry that the resin's coming off on it but I don't think so it's fine so what I found is these are if I use that and just this crappy cheap uh, key cap from a $30 set. Uh, let me get it lined up and uh, push it in here. It is, um, it's it's in there firm, you know, it's like, there's it's not loose and it's actually hard to pull it apart. This is actually a decent GMK set, um, Corsa Auto, uh, sorry. And uh, so I was gonna show what that one looks like. Uh, fuzz off my fingers if I can. Okay. So this one also is I'm pulling it. It's it's tight. Okay. So what we're gonna do now that you just saw those two. So this is our our the premise before this print was that the ones I had that were 1.25 by 1.05 were too big. So I'm gonna take this one that's slightly smaller and try it now. So I don't know which uh, it only goes on one way. So yes, it. Whoops, sorry. It. Here's the way it goes on, but it's 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 still pretty dang loose. It's like. What's interesting is I found that if I cure longer, it shrinks things too. But I'm trying to find one that in 30 minutes of curing that fits. It's a little loose, or it comes slides off easily. 
it's a little more wobbly in the this the what this direction than it is in the this direction. But well, let's see what this small one is then, and, and uh, hope that it's getting tighter here. Sorry, trying to keep it in the camera here. Okay. Uh, that's better. It's still a little loose though, so I think I can go smaller than that, even, unfortunately. I was kind of hoping to, you know, I want to be done. I've been, this is like my 10th iteration of some of the, dialing in some of the sizes, so. Yeah, it's not as hard to do this as the other two real keycaps that we saw, so. I'm going to go even smaller in my next print job. Now let me show you the jig, okay? The jigs, you know, I guess we only need one of them, but... So I guess I've shown this before, but anyways, the jig is... Getting jiggy with it. Okay, so for my jig, I made a little handle to pull, th pull, to pull with later. It's um, six millimeters <coughs> tall. <coughs> this part and two millimeters thick but inside is the measurement of the uh, yeah, the deck LNK um, keycaps which are actually strange they're not 18 by 18 they're 19.5 by 18 which again if we look I marked what I ended up with on this one that fits um, we should be able to see it on one of these guys there it is. So again, my markings of 195 means 19.5 centimeters, or sorry, millimeters by, well, the other side is 18, so. Um, so anyways, I'm going to show you what, and then, so this is my jig, so it's, it's tall and it's meant to slide over the top of the keycap, but it's meant to um, take one of the, take one, take a, the modified stem that we want to go in the, into our LNK keycap. Let's let's get that out first and show you. So here is you know one of my keycaps for the deck LNK. And uh, I I'd previously I wanted to get this old stems out of there and I ended up it was brittle enough that instead of using my Dremel and having this saw plastic I just broke them off. <laughs> I was able to break off every single one. Um, so I have a few of them here, and uh, but basically, I kept dialing iterations of this size of this box until I got one that, you know, that basically it's snugly fits in there, but yet it's easy to, it doesn't have any wiggle room, and it's easy to still pull it back out. So it's actually quite a good size right now. Um, so here's the second key from the LMK, and now, and so if I if we look closely, we'd see that. Uh, it's resting, the, the cross, the big cross is resting on the inside edge of the keycaps. So my, you know, my idea is to hold it down, but then also have my new uh, stem mod inside, you know, put, put my stem mod on here. Let me get it on here. Okay, so like that. And then put it this over the top and make sure that uh, basically I'm saying I don't care about an irregular surface on the bottom uh, as long as it's not raising as long as it's not pushing up on the jig and what we got and the the new stem so the new stems dangling there and then I'm gonna put some glue in there and I have uh, I bought some 3m acrylic scotch weld you know that when I read about it that one's the one that sounded perfect I have all those parts that's ready to go so you can kind of see that this is Kind of, I had to, I had to reprint to see what's the right height for the new stem so that it doesn't hit the bottom of most of the keys or all of the keycaps. Uh, what's the box that goes around? You know, what's the dimensions of the outside? So there's a lot that went into this jig and the new, uh, the new stems that I'm making. Now, one other thing, I, I every one of these keycaps has had like two little notches poking up on the on each side here and I'll show you one in a second but basically right there and right there and I was gonna maybe thinking about have to you know 
modify the arm of this these these this plus sign on there where it hits the edge to cut out a notch so that when those things are sticking up it, it wouldn't hit the hit the jig but I decided it's much much easier to just take some snips and snip those little guys off and so that's actually so this this episode was just to show where I'm at on the on the latest you know sizing and versions of things this part is done still dialing this in we're getting very close next print might be it and then then we're then we're ready to do the glue and the experiment so in fact I'll show you the glue in a minute but right now what I was going to do was um just show you more of the what I'm talking about we'll do the snipping I guess that's kind of you know just some mindless work that's got to be done that's kind of fun but show you what it what it looks like so here's here's my LMK set I haven't uh, done anything with the space bar yet that's what the stems used to look like on every key giant old ones that push down on a membrane um, but the rest are all stripped of their I separated I, this is a these are clean by the way and so this is like the the little function keys that don't have any text on them they're tiny they're way different in size so I just kept them separate because I don't I don't know if I'm going to use them or not yet um, the do key which I love is you know sad I need to figure out how to use that because that's amazing but but we'll set that aside and then basically we're going to look at all these and try to clip off all those little uh, problems that I was telling you about so I'll try to bring each one under the, the mic the, uh, the camera here and so you can see what I'm talking about so yeah so here's so let's just show the side profile like these nubs get in the way of my jig uh, because they stick up past the edge of the keycap but they're easy enough because to get rid of because I can just you know reach a reach a downward angle into the into the thing and, and carve and then that just that just cut a downward angle into the so nothing is above this nothing's above this surface or it's not above this surface anymore so basically that's the little chore I'm doing tonight. So maybe we can chat while I'm doing that, but that's all I'm doing. This one, I have no idea what that has no chance of doing anything. I wonder if I should separate those out. I might keep those in a different pile if there's, they're not gonna get the stem on. I mean, what did I do there? I guess it had a stabilizer that didn't, no, actually there was, there was uh, stems there that I broke. So yeah, maybe, I guess I'll keep it. It doesn't have, it's got these wings that I might need to cut off or whatever, but I'm not, I'm not at that level of detail yet. Right now I just know I can stem on these guys, the main alphas and you know, kind of the standard stuff. Let's get that first. So snipping, snipping little guys like I'm in the Chad business. Any little leftover pieces of little plastic? I probably have a million of them around my house. Here's a Chad. Maybe if I sold it, saved them all, I'd eventually get enough to recycle the plastic. That's a joke. Uh, here's a shift key that needs the, the trimming so that it's not going to stick up and bug my switch mod. So there are two, two would go in that one. I don't have an answer for that. I guess I'd have to make a jig for the different sizes than one new to do my little suspension trick that I'm trying to do. This one, the colors are great. Blue, <coughs> the numpad has some nice blue colors on it. <coughs> Again, that's why <coughs> I need a full size 1800 or whatever to get to to really show off these keycaps because the numpad are, are some of the best ones, actually. Actually, I don't have any numbers on the numpad. I think it was all text. I don't remember. Yeah, okay. here's another one lined. So, snip, snip. Yeah, um, so close, getting so close to actually doing this demo. I'm getting excited about it. I've been... I got my Elegoo printer like, I don't know, a week and a half ago, and I've been printing every night, basically one or two jobs every single night. Last night, uh, I started one at, uh, what time was it? Somehow, 
got down at 11.30 and I usually go to bed way before that. And so then I went to bed and I was worried about curing overnight or what, what it, how long can I cure it? And I did, I was too tired to even stay up. So I'm like, ah, oh, screw it. If it's messes stuff up, I'll just reprint it. Sure enough, like basically I woke up at 3.30 in the morning, so I came and got it then. So that's like a four hour secondary cure. And uh, I was shocked that it was, it was burnt kind of. And I, I'm using a UV lamp with both the grow part lamps of it on. So it's probably too intense, I guess, but it's nice because it speeds things up. I actually bought it because I use it for um, retro writing, but it works well as a secondary cure for this resin printer. <clears throat> Anyways, what's well, here? Oh, I'm off camera because I'm good. There's. I also had a contest of upside down clean keycaps because I was letting them dry, and I put four different sets, and they're quite a strange variety of, uh, you know, you know, Televideo 925, a Deck LNK, a Deck BT50, and what was the other one? Oh, an Epson Proto, you know, uh, dome. What's it called? Uh, brother dome and foil I guess yeah <clears throat> or proto topra is what some people call it but it's proto it's an awesome keyboard too and so I put it I thought it'd be fun to have a little contest who can tell from the upside down bottoms of these four key four sets of keycaps what machines they belong to and I woke up the next morning and this 19 year old from Argentina answered every single one and I'm like how does he know all that that's crazy so I put twenty dollars out there as a prize and he got it and we didn't have PayPal working too good but he wanted a um, a common sense uh, or a yeah, cap sense board <clears throat> so I from uh, Cypress so I bought him that as the because that's about the same amount so anyways uh, I thought since I had broken off all the, the stems of these keycaps uh, of the deck L and K that the, the space bar's in there and that he would t be able to tell by the, these stems that that's what it was. But he said instead, nope, it's the, it was the yellow key that gave it away. There's only one yellow key on the on the deck keyboards. So that's how he was able to figure out this key set, keycap set. Um, yeah, I was doing a lot of cleaning last week. And I cleaned the cases, I cleaned the caps and ultrasonic. And I did some retrobrating on some other ones that aren't even the ones I just mentioned. And I cleaned by hand with magic eraser, warm soapy water and stuff, the, uh, the caps, the, the top and bottom case of a couple of the ones that went with this. Okay. With the, the four key caps, that's what I mean. But... All right, let's keep moving here. You know, I figure it's a few rounds of quality check. Like, like I'll probably glue glue in one and see if that works before I start gluing in ten of them. And then each time I'll probably uh, set the, you know, set this on top of it. I'm thinking about <coughs> <coughs> making sure that with the stem on, it's not. This guy's interesting. Too big, or what's going on here? Not actually fitting very well. Let's try a different one. This keycap is bigger than the rest. I gotta, I gotta double check my elevations. I might have to make a jig for each um, R1, two, three, and four. But I don't know, man. I thought I had the keycaps I had out were from some, several of the elevations. So this is going in, but I had to force it in. It's too big, like. And you can see that it's touching the bottom. You know, if you see how evenly it's fit in there, it's not like it's sticking up. But I don't have anything. Actually, I don't know if I can get this out of here, but I'll try to use my uh, spudger. There we go. That was a tight fit. I think I'll keep that one set aside so I can measure my another one to measure the jig with because it's bigger than the rest. All right, um, this one have any of those, this one have any of those stems on it? Not really. Oh yeah, there's a couple right here, but, and those will interfere, but since I got other wings to deal with and stuff, I'll just save those mini ones for later. I should keep my little Chad pile on screen too, so you can... See if it grows appreciably during the video. You can see the yellow ones, it's funny. 
Where's Saudi Arabia? There it is. Gathering up the chance, because you know, I'm not bored. There we go, there's some chance for you. Did I do this one yet? Okay, let's get a move on here. So this is, I guess I'm showing this video in case it's informative and just one of the little steps I had to do to mod this this particular um, cap set. This is my first mod. I don't know what other ones will be like, but this one, so I'm, I like my, my jig idea, but uh, what's... <coughs> What I'm unhappy about that I chose this set first, I chose it because of the beautiful blue double shot thumb pad, but what I was saddened by was the uh, the, in, the weird sizing that the keys are 19.5 <clears throat> millimeters in one direction instead of the standard 18 by 18. So that's that part is probably the worst part of this. And I don't know if that means I gotta put it back on, you know, retrofit the guts of its old case or um, get, make something new with the plate that's further far enough apart and you put, try to make some new case I don't know what I'm gonna do yet but or whether maybe it'll fit I, this is what I'm wanting to try is after I glue a few of the new stems on there I'll use one of my boards and put the cap maybe I'll, I'll make sure I do like R1 through R4 first so that we can uh, you know, really see if it's gonna fit or not <coughs> on the standard my guts tell me it won't, but I'll try. I don't know. I mean, I suppose you can measure and know ahead of time, but I guess I guess I don't want to know because then it would wreck my fun of even doing the mod. I'm learning a lot by going through the mod. But, so I, yeah, I also want to organize the files of the mod that you know they're. I used Mesh Mixer to do it and. And then I export STL files, and that's what I bring into my 3D printer, my resin printer. Um, so I'd like to put those up on GitHub as a, a, a gist, or I'll make some area for it on my personal account, I guess. And if someone, you know, it'd be nice if I got the sizing right, and someone else that wanted the mod and LN, a, a deck LNK that they would have everything I need to do this keycap stem mod. The other thing is wording, like, is it a stem? You know, the switch has a stem and the keycap has a stem, but I know on uh, Death Authority, I think one guy liked to call it a mount to differentiate, like the keycap one's a mount. I don't know if I quite agree yet, but um, it's one way to describe it in a different way, I guess. So... Snip, snip, we go along the... So we get them all. This was... <clears throat> I just felt like this was way better than trying to cut a notch out of my jig. Because I it kind of gets tiresome making revisions of, in Mesh Mixer. You gotta, maybe I'm not doing it right, but... I make... Um, the 2D, I have 2D planes that I turn into the arms of the cross the crosses and then then I usually combine them select all and then extrude so that that's what gives them the 3d the third dimension and then make solid and then do do boolean differences between that to get a negative space like in the keycap to get the cross hollowed out uh, it's pretty I was I knew I, I had to kind of learn it because in order to do what I'm trying to do here I didn't have a choice I had to do learn something and I'd say I'm glad I learned Mesh Mixer. I like it a lot. It's um, it's been rewarding and fun, but it is a bit tedious. I guess what I was getting at is when I want to tweak a dimension, I can't do that if it's already in the 3D and solid. I gotta. It's better to start with the 2D, change the dimensions, and extrude again than to do anything else. Because that's where I'm wondering if I'm doing it right, but. That's been my philosophy. It's pretty, you know, it's not hard, but it's a little time consuming. You gotta make sure you get all your numbers right and redo the steps and to tweak the size a little bit. <clears throat> all right, here we go with the big wide one. 
Chad Central, are you building up enough that we can overturn the Florida vote for George W. Bush uh, a few elections ago? That's a nice black one, yeah, what is that? Okay. Yeah, these are, it's a wonderful keycap set, at least to my eye. So I, you know, gonna do my best to try to get some reuse out of it. <clears throat> so after this, I'll be one step closer with these things and then Maybe one or two more prints of the the keycap, the new the new keycap stem. Then we'll be ready to go for some glue. If I'm still up to it when we get past, we got about 30 more keys or so to go. We're not even halfway yet, but um, I don't know the number. I was just guessing. But uh, when we get done, I can try to show you my idea on the or show you the glue, <coughs> the parts that I bought for the glue from 3M that I, you know, gone because it has to mix, you know, different ratios, two, two parts together. And so it's fancy. I've never done that, but I uh, was excited to try that and see how that goes. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I suppose you could do cheaper ways and all that. And I guess my limit is kind of things under a hundred dollars that I think I want. I will and then I think I'll reuse on multiple projects, then I usually will go for it. And so this one was hard because the gun itself was like 50 bucks and the glue was only like 10 or 20. But then you gotta buy nozzles. Uh, I did 10 of those, a uh, <coughs> pack of 10 nozzles. And so it started adding up, but I'm like, eh, I think I'll use this. I, I believe in what the research that 3M did and the variety of glue products that they have and being able to pick one and, so I think I'll reuse the the gun and the, I'll, I'll be able to get some use out of the system buying different glues. And hope I'm right. I'm full poser in everything I buy it and even though I haven't tried it. Uh, like I have a whole Cerakote <clears throat> do-it-yourself set up at home right now. I'm waiting for the weather to get warmer because I feel like it's too toxic for indoors. So I gotta get warmer weather to go try it outside. I have a shed back there, but no heat and I was trying to get it actually doesn't have electricity I'm renting and I gotta get an electrician out to it's, it's got lights inside and all that but it's not hooked up quite right to anything I think I'll be running an extension cord with some pigtails or something that I can plug into the underside of the shed and then all of a sudden that'll make all from a circuit in the house here and then then I'll have access to all those lights and stuff inside there and to power my tools. It's a nice looking return key. There's a red one, what do we got? Del delete word. Guess I should try to be in the center of the camera a little more. Okay. Like a little miniature game of uh, risk going on here with my dust mat and the chads building up my armies in Saudi Arabia. I haven't played risk in 10, 20 years now. But no, 20 years, 30 years? I don't know. I remember enjoying it, enjoying it when I was younger, but I haven't played it as a family. Probably should have. I think it's a great game. <clears throat> I wonder if anyone else looked at this and thought it looked like a risk board if I took away my hands. No, not really. Okay, we're getting, the pile's getting smaller over here. Look at in there. One more step towards keycap stem mod completion. Ooh, I think our DoorDash food might, might have arrived. I don't know, I'm hungry. 
No, nope, we're still waiting for it. It's overdue by a lot. It's Cinco de Mayo and we're me <coughs> Mexican. Probably not the smartest idea because a million other people would have that same idea and the people doing the food delivery are not going to turn down any orders. They're just going to make everything and take an hour and a half instead of 30 minutes. So, we're waiting on Cinco de Mayo food. Allie. I think she's talking loud, oh, but it's funny. Yeah. 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 And <clears throat> when you live in a house cooped up with COVID, you can't expect it to be quiet, but <clears throat> it felt like that was extra large volume. No problem. Love you. Put some of my risk pieces over here and some over here. Does it look like risk? I forget. Okay. Yeah, these are, you know, completely on the inside edge. So if I just lean in and angle down, touching the edge with the bottom, it's definitely not sticking up above the, the edge in any way when I get done. I'm, what I enjoy about the hobby is it's like what you, you think of ways to achieve the goal, but they might not end up, the ones you end up using might not be anything like that. So. I thought for a long time I was just going <coughs> to notch out the <coughs> the um, jig, but instead I'm like, oh, I can snip these out. That sounds better. A better example is break it. You know, I thought I was going to have to drill out the stems of this, these keycaps, but they were so brittle, I ended up realizing breaking them was much faster and more efficient and took less time. In fact, I didn't even get very far along with my Dremel, but I wasn't pleased. It's... It's hard to get a bit that's small enough to get in there, and it's like, I was, it was not gonna be fast. I'd have to figure out some better, I, I didn't get a chance to explore too much with it, but initial results were not encouraging, I guess. But I want it to work, that's part of why I bought it, is I thought it would help with small tasks, small details like this. But. So maybe I'm not using it right or whatever, but or using the right bit or, I have a lot of Dremel stuff, and I hope to use it all, but again, full poser, not enough, no real experience, too much yet with it. My knife, my wife tried sharpening the knives with it, and uh, that was kind of, not her fault, but I think it was a mediocre job, there's more art to sharpening knives than just running a Dremel over the edge, so, but worth trying though, for sure, to see if it worked. All right, a little chad pile. We got like four or five more keys left. And then we'll be caught up. Surprisingly, most of them just stayed there. Only a couple shot off to the, up in the air a foot and landed somewhere else. Um, here we go, There's about four left after this one. Counting down. I actually believe I did talk about saving chads in another video, and I saved those chads somewhere, but I don't know if I can find it right now. I guess I could do my part and save these until I do find it and consolidate, or it's, I guess it's dumb, but it's kind of a little humor, like, oh, here's the leftover parts from, they're so tiny. 
when a keyboard teardown has a lot of chads, then I'm like, then I know the complexity of that keyboard is too much. I've had a couple that were like that. In fact, this keyboard was one of them. You can see the details, the amount I work I have to do for this. Okay, we are caught up. I'm going to zoom out again. There we go. You can see a little chad pile. Let me get the glue and stuff. So, right or wrong, here's what I picked for uh, for the glue part coming up eventually, very soon, I hope. So this is the, yeah, this is uh, the glue gun that comes with two ratio, different ratios, like, um, yeah, what's it say? 10 to one or whatever that is, two to one. Oh, one to one or two to one, I guess is what it means. Um, oh, this is a better picture too, a bigger one. And it kind of is showing how to insert the glue and how to attach the glue tip. Am I supposed to break the tip off halfway down of this long? Like halfway down one of these? I, I guess I'll have to watch a video. I haven't done that yet. So here is the, the gun part. It's pretty good quality but expensive from 3M. This is what I chose for the glue. Scotch weld acrylic adhesive DP8410 NS green. There was a cool video where they had plastic and it had grease on it and it just didn't matter. It just bonded like super strong. It's very special characteristics. So I thought I don't want to be like sanding or my parts so that they bond better. So I hope this is just going to do some magic for me. Uh, so yeah, it's a two part, uh, two parts to it and it's a 10 to one ratio. So that's why I made sure I got all the right parts. I hope here's the ratio guys. So between the gun, the glue, and the nozzles, we should be set up those three different things I had to buy separate. That should be what we need. So I'll save these little chads. I'll put all these keys back in a, their bag that says they're clean. And uh, I'll reprint some more of uh, these little guys. The, and uh, hopefully the next video will be actually gluing one or something. And you know, I was thinking I'd wrap a rubber band around it to hold it because I don't want I don't want the glue to like cause it to raise up or something. And I forgot I also have to see why that one keycap. I got to measure more keycaps to see if I need more. I know I have uh, this this jig works for four of the keys I had, but then I'll send this fifth key. I have to figure out why that one's different. Might be, no, it's not a numpad either, so, uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, that's it for this video, uh, hope it was interesting, and, uh,